I got something new and shiny here today, sent by Ingenious. Check that out. The ECW336. Now this access point is a Wi-Fi 6E access point and has 2.5 gig ethernet port on it. So let's check it out. Thank you to Ingenious for sending this to me. So it's showing Wi-Fi 6 with a 4x4 indoor 6 gigahertz tri-band access point. Looks like here is the online instructions through a QR code and it's plug and play with zero configuration. So I'll take this off and here is the access point. I've got the using ingenious services and the simplified e declaration of conformity again. And inside of here we have the installation brackets. Now real quick for a size comparison, here is the other access point that they sent me, which is the ECW220S. Now it's definitely a lot bigger and heavier, but it also has the 6 gigahertz antenna inside as well, and it is a 4x4 configuration. On the last Ingenious access point, and I'll link that somewhere here on the screen here for you guys, I used the web portal to go ahead and set it up. And this time I'm going to just connect it in here, and I am using a... 2.5 gig PoE injector. And once this boots up, I will use the app to set everything up. I totally misspoke earlier here. I thought it was 2.5 gig on this. I was wrong. That supports five gigabit PoE. Now I just logged into my switch and I am using a 2.5 gig PoE injector. It's a PoE plus rated up for I believe 30 watts. I did just look up the specs on this and it can take up to 22.5 watts. So my 30 watt PoE plus injector should be fine. Although I am curious how it will perform. Although the link speed is at five gigabit, the PoE injector itself claims to only be 2.5 gigabit. Let's find out. It's registered. Let me add it to the site and finish setup. Wow, it is so much easier in this app than it is using the web interface, which is a lot more clunky. So. Let me just configure this real quick. Hmm. Only 80 megahertz channel width for the five gigahertz and 160 megahertz width for six gigahertz. Save that. And it looks like you cannot have a six gigahertz SSID if you have hiding enabled. So in other words, if you have a SSID that does not broadcast the name, then it disables the six gigahertz on this. I don't know if that is a requirement for the spec or not. I'm going to set up separate SSIDs for this real quick and I'll be right back. So I'm connected with my phone over five gigahertz and let's see what kind of speeds we get with this. Now I'm going to take a look at some of the settings and see if anything can be improved because I think the smaller access point performed a bit better, but uh, everything's set to auto right now. So let me dig through that real quick. Now it turns out it was actually doing a firmware update around the same time that I was connected, but I went ahead and reconfigured the access point. So it has three separate SSIDs for each of the radios. So let's do a speed test again. And this is over five gigahertz at 80 megahertz width. We got 597.8 megabits down and 838.5 megabits up. Now let's try it over six gigahertz. So we got 616.4 megabits downloads and 1,850.5 megabits upload. Now I am still using the PoE injector. I'm curious how this will perform if I connect it to a five gigabit PoE switch. So now I'm using a five gigabit PoE switch and let's run this again on five gigahertz. Definitely a lot faster. So I suspect PoE injector is the culprit. So that got 939.5 megabits down and 825.2 megabits up over five gigahertz using 80 megahertz channel width. Now I am curious if there is a model that will allow 160 megahertz channel width on five gigahertz. Now let's run the test using the six gigahertz band. Wow. That is fast. That's 1,314.8 megabits down and 1,651.5 megabits up. Now I am curious what kind of speeds we'll get over 2.4 gigahertz with just 20 megahertz channel width. And that is actually a lot better than I expected. Whoop, yeah. 
So that's 139.6 megabits down and 168.6 megabits up. Remember, that's only 20 megahertz channel width. So that is pretty fast. So who is the ECW336-4 at $699 for MSRP? Well, most home users will probably avoid this just on the price alone. However, if performance is your primary concern, this can definitely kick the snot out of anything that Ubiquiti currently has to offer. Uh, that's a fact. And with the insane throughput using the 6 gigahertz spectrum, this is almost uh, a replacement for Ethernet, provided that you're close enough. Now, now you might also want to go ahead and check out some of the other ingenious equipment that I've tested right up here.